Deja vu. That's what it feels like. It is a Sunday in beautiful Sonoma County, California. And just as I did some time back, I don't know, it must be three, four, five, maybe even longer than that, years ago, I did a video of a uh, Sonoma County Sunday drive. And here I am on a beautiful Sunday. It's, uh, oh, probably mid-afternoon and the sun is out. Temperatures are probably right at about, uh, oh, I don't know, 85 degrees. And I'm gonna go down River Road all the way to Jenner. And then from Jenner, I'm gonna go down to Bodega Bay and then in through the town of Bodega where uh, Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds was filmed and uh, find my way back to Sebastopol just in time to have dinner with a special friend. So I thought that, uh, thought that what I would do is I would bring you along and I'm not gonna do anything all that, uh, that extravagant with the, uh, with the video, mind you. I'm just gonna bring you along for the drive as if you were with me yourself and just share some of the uh, some of my more favorite places as I uh, as I drive along. So there are no uh, no shortage of favorite places. I got to tell you, we'll be going through the town of Guerneville, and maybe we'll stop and see the uh, Armstrong Armstrong Woods, which is a uh, grove of redwoods. And uh, oh, we're going to go out and go to Goat Rock and a couple other places along the way. So. One of the first stops, place that I really like, is this place right here. This is a, well, it's a little fruit stand, if you will. And for as long as I can remember, you can stop by here and pick up some Bing cherries, which are in season right now for $2.49 a pound, and a whole variety of other locally grown produce that's here in, in Sonoma County. There's no shortage of uh, just wonderful, wonderful produce that you can buy. So I'm just gonna do a real quick, uh, real quick walk through and just show you some of the beautiful stuff that you can get here. Sweet, sweet California melons and honeydews. Just all types of beautiful, beautiful stuff. Nectarines. And I'd imagine that uh, a good majority of all of this stuff is grown, uh, grown right here. You know, they got peaches, I see peaches, I see plums. Apricots uh, over here. Of course, you've got your selection of grapes. You've got red grapes and uh, black grapes and green, and then you've got your strawberries. And then, of course, there's your uh, your strawberries over here. So no shortage of uh, no shortage of fruit. And then, of course, you've got all types of you know vegetables over here. You've got your it looks like they've got some corn on the corn on the cob that you can grab. And uh, bananas. I don't think they grew the bananas here, but they've got, uh, you know, they've got bananas, and, and uh, you've got tomatoes. You got all types of different tomatoes that you can buy. And then down here, of course, you've got all of your, you've got your onions and your, just the whole nine yards, so to speak, as the saying goes. So, with that, uh, with that quick little tour here of the. Uh, of the fruit stand, let's uh, let's get on with the tour of the uh, of the Sunday Sonoma County Sonoma County Drive. Boy, if there were ever a good spot to stop, this would be it. Waller Road and East Side Road, right here on the uh, Russian River, going out towards uh, going out towards Guerneville. And I actually used to live on East Side Road for uh, several months. And just up here, you have the the Rafford Rafford Inn, R A F O R D, the Rafford Inn. And I've never actually been up to the Rafford Inn. Maybe one day I'll uh, venture my way up and up there. But uh, I thought I would share this with you. And then as I as I turn around, there is a uh, a signpost with all the different all the different wineries that are off to the left here. You see Mill, Mill Creek and uh, Flowers and Thomas George and Porter Creek wineries and, and Rodney Strong is off to the right. And there's a placard right here that says the Waller Ranch. In 1856, 1,500 acres of the 17,892 acre Rancho El Molino were a gift of love to Mariano Vallejo's niece Anna Waller. In the 1880s, Hopps pioneer Rafford Peterson purchased the land and built the house on the hill 
where his family lived for a hundred years. The Wohler Ranch led Sonoma County in the production of hops and offered a fresh start and a new life for Italian immigrant workers. The house and the final four acres exist today as the Rafford Inn, a reminder to visitors the world over of Sonoma County's rich cultural and agricultural heritage. So it is a, uh, needless to say, in, in addition to being a beautiful, beautiful spot, the Sonoma County is just a, uh, Sonoma County really is something, uh, something special. And here is the, here is the Woolard, Wooler Vineyard, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir uh, grapes. So there is no shortage of beauty throughout all of Sonoma County. And just look at these grapes. As far as the eye can see, as far as the eye can see, you've got just row of row of uh, vines after vines after vines, just as far as you can see. And it's just a, uh, it's just beautiful. I think beautiful is a bit of a, beautiful is a bit of an understatement. But uh, there you have it. So there's the first stop on the, on the way out to the, way out to the Russian River. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the word is remiss, as in, I would be remiss if I took you on a Sunday drive here in beautiful Sonoma County out to the Russian River. And didn't stop here at uh, Corbell Champagne Cellars. And it'll be a, uh, it'll be a brief stop, but I just want you to see this beautiful, beautiful place. This place is owned by somebody that, uh, well, I can't call him my friend, but uh, certainly could call him my acquaintance. His name is Gary Heck, and Gary Heck is a, uh, just a wonderful, wonderful man. And you can look up the history on Corbell Winery, founded in 1882. And, you know, I've, I've been on this tour more times than I could even begin to share with you. But uh, the story goes something like this. The, the brothers came in, I don't know, maybe the Corbell brothers. They came in from, I think, the uh, Czech Republic. And they were chopping down redwood trees to make cigar boxes. And here you see a, uh, look at this, this redwood tree right here. So this is a, uh, these are actually, they cut down the redwood and then the, the little seedlings grew right out of the, uh, this is a historical redwood, re historical redwood tree. But the, uh, the, the, the roots grew out of the, uh, out of the stump. And look at that. Is that something? Really, really something else. What a, what a view to say the very, very least, huh? Huh, Harry and, uh, Amy over there in Belfast? What a, uh, what a view that is. So just up the, uh, just up the road here, you'll see a, a tower. And that tower was built to uh, replicate a tower where the, one of the, uh, one of the brothers, the Corbell brothers, I think it's, I think the original brothers was Corbell. But uh, one of the brothers was uh, held, held prisoned, or imprisoned, I should say, over in the Czech Republic. And, uh, and I think it was his mother or somebody that came in and hid some clothes underneath her dress or something. And, and he escaped and found his way to, to America to start the Corbell, Cor what ultimately became and still is the Corbell Winery. And this would have been the station where the, where the train would come through. You see to San Francisco, 70.85 meters, and we're at 65, 66 feet above sea level. And the Corbell station was erected in 1876. And this was the, the terminus of the fulton Gurnville branch of the Northwestern Pacific Railway. And you can see there's all types of really nice picture. There's engine number 111 below Corbell heading for Rio Nido in the summer of 1935. And there's Dinky 99 at Rio Nido about 1900. Look at that. So there's all types of stuff that I could share with you, but this is the uh, the visitor center. 
you step in and there's uh, there's some cellar workers there. Quite a famous picture. In there. And they actually have quite the, uh, there's the Corbell family right there. And then of course you have the, the tasting room just down the road. So for the sake of brevity, I'll forego the, uh, the tasting room. I'll just tell you that it's, uh, it's quite, a, uh, quite an experience. And the Corbell, Corbell Champagne Cellars actually has been voted the, the best wine tour in Sonoma County for uh, quite a number of years. I don't know if anything is, has beat them, but uh, it is quite the, uh, actually quite the tour if you're ever in Sonoma County and you want to take a nice tour. And then just up on the hill are the, is the, is the house. There's the house up there on the, on the hill and there's a beautiful garden and I can't say that I've ever actually been in the, in the garden. I'm not quite sure if it's open. Maybe it is, uh, maybe it actually is open and I can step inside and give you a quick peek. All right, so as luck would have it, the gate is open, and I think there's a tour going on right now. And I don't know that I can join the tour, but I can give you a nice view of the of the gardens here at the Corbell Champagne Cellars. I'm sure my good friend Phil, back in uh, Michigan, will appreciate seeing this. He's got quite the He's got quite the garden himself, and I can't say that I've ever actually been into the into the gardens here at the Corbell Champagne Cellars. So this is a uh, first for me, as well as probably for many of you. Found my way just up to what I think is uh, the Rose Garden. Look at this. Boy, what a delight to be able to share this with you, considering that I've never actually been here myself. And if I turn around, I can show you the, show you the porch on the house. So they would, there they would sit, looking out over their, their vineyards. Look at that. Maybe I can join in on the tour. We will, uh, we will see as the saying goes. But boy, it's beautiful. Look at this. Here's your redwood trees. I've been on the uh, wine tour quite a bit, but I've never actually been on the on the garden tour. Alright, I found my way up to the tour and they're actually at the rear rear of the house and here is the looks like the porch actually goes around the, the entire perimeter of the home. And I'll just show you the the garden right over here. Look at how wonderful. And here is the, the tour itself that's going on. Very, very nice. It opens up into a large open area here.
All right, folks. And I'll show you the view. Looking down onto the onto the vineyards below. There you go. There you have it. All right. Next stop is the uh, Armstrong Armstrong Red Redwood Forest. On my way out, this is a nice view of the rear of the house. Boy, I bet they had some wonderful memories here. All right, on my way back to the truck, I found myself thinking that my good friend George over in Pennsylvania, he'd probably never forgive me for not showing you the, uh, the tasting room here at the uh, Corbell. Corbell Champagne Cellars, and I will uh, just take a moment and walk through. This is the, the gift shop where you can uh, find a, a bunch of different, uh, different gift ideas. And then, of course, you can buy yourself some some champagne. I've had more than my share of champagne over the years. There's some wonderful gifts that you can buy. Very, very nice. If you like lemons, as my friend Edit does over in Italy, in Genoa. She would love all of, she would definitely love all of this, right here. Very nice. And they're quite, uh, quite friendly with their, with their samples here. So, they do a really, really nice job tasting, uh, tasting champagne. All right, folks, on with the, uh, on with the tour. Welcome to Armstrong Woods State Park of Time and Trees. Humans gauge their development through benchmarks in history, while the redwoods in this grove persist with quiet, steady growth. And as you enter into the park, here is a exhibit that gives you an idea as to just how long some of these trees have been around and how they gauge the the age of the trees so they've got different different benchmarks the the tree being you know at the, the number one spot right there in the center would be a thousand years ago and then 11 uh, number two I won't go through them all but you can see them here number two is 11 AD uh, Mesa Verde and Shakespeare they got the piano was vented at spot number four and 1849 is spot number five and, uh, and there you have it. So we are on our way into the uh, into the park, and I brought my brought my unicycle along with me. And I'm gonna give you, albeit a brief little little ride through uh, some of the park here. And as I do, uh, I'll give you some nice uh, nice views of the of the redwoods. This is probably one of my favorite spots in Sonoma County. I've come out here quite a few times and you can't have somebody come visit you. You can't have somebody come visit you in uh, in Sonoma County without bringing them here into this beautiful forest. So it really is a uh, it's a magical place. And having come from Kings Canyon National Park where you had the giant sequoias these are their little brothers and sisters, if you will. The, the redwoods here along the California California coast. But just look at how, how beautiful those are as you look up. Is that something or what? I have a lot of memories here at this at this park. 
Maybe I can jump on the on the unicycle here. Such as I just did and bring you through the park here. Just wonderful. Everywhere I go, it's just really, really a nice memory. Better be somewhat careful going down this road on my unicycle, trying to look at the scenery and look at the road. Two birds, one stone. Just magnificent. Stop for just a moment. You see fern all along the, the forest floor. Boy, it's wonderful. Look at that. And I actually rode right past Parson Jones, which I believe is one of the biggest, biggest redwood trees here in the Armstrong Grove. Parson Jones, taking many, uh, many of pictures in front of Parson Jones. Last time I was here, as a matter of fact, or a couple, couple visits ago, I was with my dad. And my dad and I came through here, and I had a had a picture of my dad and Parson Jones together. Look at that, 310 feet, 13.8 feet in diameter, and he's approximately 1,300 years old. And there is one. Mr. Parson Jones, and you can search Parson Jones. It's named after a after a gentleman. But look at the uh, look at Parson Jones here, folks. Is that something or what? All right, let's reach the beach. It goes without saying that if they call it the Russian River Wine Region. There must be a river here somewhere, and there it is. There is the Russian River, and this Russian River winds all through Sonoma County and, and other parts of Northern California as well, and it finds its way to the Pacific Ocean, which is just a uh, stone's throw over my left shoulder, and it's actually getting a lot cooler here, and this is a spot that I'll often stop and take a nice picture, you know, along the... Uh, along the drive and I thought I would share this with you so it's just absolutely it's really really a beautiful beautiful spot a perfect spot to take some uh, pictures and I've taken many 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 pictures over the years if you were doing your own tour of Sonoma County a Sunday drive this is uh, one of the stops that you might uh, make along the way this is the road leading into Goat Rock and Goat Rock is a real popular spot to come out on a uh, on a hot summer day for a picnic or just to hang out at the beach as I've gotten nearer to the as I've gotten nearer to the coast it's definitely much much cooler than inland and uh, and the wind is really as you can look at the uh, look at the grass just blowing there I'm not gonna not gonna venture out, but that hill that you see right over there, when you come in off of uh, 
off of Highway 1 into Goat Rock State Park, you'll notice that hill right there, and there's a path actually going up that hill. And that's where I used to go on Sunday afternoons. I would pack a lunch and uh, sometimes sometimes take a friend and, and take a picnic and walk up that path to the other side of that hill and just sit there overlooking the, the beautiful Sonoma County uh, coastline and, and the Pacific Ocean. You just never know what to expect when you head out from Santa Rosa to the Sonoma County coast. It could be just warm and, and mild out here or it could be uh, somewhat brutal like it is today. It is just windy, windy and cold. The sun is out, the sun is out, but nonetheless, you can see from the, the, the surf below that it is just rather, rather windy. And uh, it is also majestic as you come out here. You're gonna hear the wind as I stick the camera out the window, but uh, it is really a majestic sight to behold, unlike the beaches of Southern California which are a lot more tranquil but this is really uh, a majestic view that's goat rock off in the distance there and this would be the very spot that I stood back, uh, boy, I don't even know the year, but I stood at this very spot and I, I surrendered myself to Christ. I, I, I stood right here, it was a rainy, I think the month was March, and I stood here and, and it was raining out and I was just, uh, I was at the end of the rope, so to speak, and I just opened my arms to the heavens and I said, Lord Jesus Christ, I said, I surrender. I said, come into my life make me an instrument of your peace and put me on a path of righteousness that will ultimately lead me to your open arms in heaven. And uh, right here, right here is where I set it, looking right at, uh, looking right at Goat Rock of all things. And uh, boy, you know, God didn't, uh, Jesus didn't disappoint to say the very, very least. I think it goes without saying that this is not the place that you would want to be if a tsunami came in. I don't, well, I don't think you'd want to be anywhere where a tsunami came in, but this is just cold. This is a very, very cold spot, and there is, uh, there is Goat Rock right there. So that is, that is Goat Rock. I'm actually filming this from inside my car just because it is just so windy and cold out there. But uh, this should give you an idea just what the, uh, what the coastline can be like. And I can't even imagine being in there, out there on a boat in this. One last shot of the coast here at Goat Rock State Park. And I think it goes without saying that it is high tide right now. You can just hear the surf. They have what are called sleeper waves here. And every year, unfortunately, a few to several people may lose their lives walking along this stretch of beach because they'll be walking along and a, a rather large wave will just come, come out of nowhere and, and, and sweep, them out to, uh, sweep them out to sea. All right, I found my way back from the coast and I'm going through Monterio, the little town of Monterio. And I thought I would end this Sunday drive with you, taking you through a beautiful stretch of road right here between Monterio and Guerneville. Here you see some folks coming back, probably from a day at the river. But it is a, uh, it's a rather windy, windy road here. And here shortly we'll go through a beautiful section of, of redwood forest. The river is off to the, just off to the right. And just up ahead, if I'm not mistaken, we'll enter into a really pretty scenic 
grove of, uh, of redwood trees. And that's uh, probably as good a spot as any to stop the, uh, to end the, end the video of the Sunday drive. I was gonna take a drive down the coast, but when I saw how windy it was and the, the time of the day, I thought uh, it was probably better just to turn around and head back on to Santa Rosa for dinner with a friend and uh, and bring you bring you along through the uh, through the redwoods which we're entering just about here we're gonna start going through the the redwoods right here it really is a scenic scenic drive no matter what time of the year you go through here it really is a beautiful stretch of beautiful stretch of road so have a uh, have a great day, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the the drive along River Road out to out to the Pacific Ocean.